Jordan. Um, and greetings. Welcome. It's so nice to see so many people that we, I have, I mean, I've been hugging so many people that I haven't seen in several years. So <laughs> apologies if I haven't gotten to you. So Brendan, thank you very much. That was the perfect way to start our little celebration today. Um, it was your vision nearly five years ago that got me um, uh, motivated about this, not only about taking something that once was a vital part of a Vermont community and of Richmond, but also about the um, environmental aspect. For me, I think it's intrinsic our values that we should be serving the, go the greater good and making sure that we're leaving this place and this world that we have in a better place than we've received it. So the fact that we are taking a brownfield and removing all the risks from this community and from the environment, but then also turning it into a net zero development that will be powered by solar. So soon we will be standing under a solar canopy, which will be right over there. So that will be very exciting. Um, so I'm very grateful for Brendan for to, to bring me part of this journey. Um, I've already introduced myself. I'm um, Josie Keitel. What I want to do is talk a little bit about why it's so exceptional that we're actually standing here. Because I think it's so easy for us to think about and look at this beautiful new building, this clean soil, no derelict asbestos filled building and forget about how hard it was to get here. Um, and I wanted to kind of talk through because there was many points over the last four years where I was like, what did I get myself into? Like who thought about buying a brownfield was a good idea. Um, so, uh, but there was, uh, the, the cleanup actually ended up costing four times the amount and taking three times longer. Uh, when I first got involved in the project, the prior owner had cost estimated the cost of cleanup, which probably one would do, at $250,000. That cost was quickly thrown out the window uh, because it actually ended up uh, needing significant more funding. Um, so we actually had to go and work with our partners in Montpelier, which who many are here today, and I'm so grateful for their support, to actually go and fund several different rounds of grant funding. So we got one of the largest community block grants um, for $550,000 in 2000. 2016 um, and then we started the, the part of the cleanup halfway through we found additional contaminants which means assessment design more funding go back to the well request more more funding um, and the team showed up and and helped us um, and we ended up and end, ended up getting uh, raising 1.1 million dollars to clean up the site uh, the majority of that was from federal grants but some of it was from private funding so I'm very grateful to my banking partners here and trusting in us um, and throughout this whole process um, it, the the Barra program which is the there's a lot of acronyms, so I'm going to actually say this properly. It's the Brownfield Economic Revitalization Alliance. Um, that's the Barra program, which was actually one of the reasons that we're here today. We were one of the pilot projects and the pilot properties to be part of that, and we're the first to cross the finish line. Um, and it is a program, it's about trying to create collaboration between both developers, private developers, and um, state, uh, state partners and local partners. So we actually par uh, partnered with the town of Richmond to get the community block grant. Jeff Urbanic is somewhere in here, I can't see him in the, in the flood of people. Uh, and he was a wonderful partner with us in terms of managing this and delivering it. So, um, and it was without him, we would not be here today. Um, and we were able to get the funding that was re required. Um, the Barra program, beyond just getting the funding, was about collaboration and community. Without a doubt, if the Barra program did not um, exist, we would not be here. We had weekly calls to have discussions and to make sure that we kept on track to remove any barriers. I can't even tell you how many phone calls that I had late nights to Josh Hanford or somebody or Trish saying, ah, oh, I've got an issue. Can you help me? Can you remove this barrier? You know, or like, what are we going to do about this? And it was super collaborative and it, we made it happen. And without those types of processes, is, I don't think we would be here today. Um, beyond that, um, sorry, I got my notes. Um, uh, so 
beyond that, I, there is the people has been, um, I have a long list and I don't want it to be like an Oscars acceptance speech, but I would feel remiss if I didn't actually n name a lot of the people who are here today that actually helped us be here. So Jeff, Claire, Josh, Jess, Suzanne, um, the select board, both past and present, the interim zoning committee, Brendan talked about that. If without that hard work and the dedication and passing that, they wouldn't have incentivized us to come. Uh, the DRB, Charlie Baker, the Rutland and Northwest Regional Planning Commissions, they provided us necessary funding to get us to here today. Gabe, Tim, Western Business Slopes, Debt Leave, our wonderful partner over there. Um, we have at the state, we have Josh, Joan, Brett, Trish, Christy, Kirsten, Patrick, Anne, Claire, Frank, Joe, I'm like literally, seriously. <laughs> um, and then we have the people that on a day-to-day -day people kept, kept me sane. So we, I have like Miranda from Cathedral Stairs, Todd, Kurt, Chris Nordle, who I see back there is our lawyer. How many times I've called you and being like, ah. Um, I, you too know, much. Our, <laughs> too much probably. Um, our funding partners, Will and Marie, um, our financial partners, Biggs and Jack, um, and then our wonderful crew. Um, so, and then, it, of course, my family and friends, they get dealt with a lot of my crazy um, uh, and made sure that we stayed on track. But then really the thanks and reason we're here is to Brendan. I mean, he is, you know, thank you for trusting in me and with zero development experience and zero brownfield experience. The fact that we actually pulled this off is pretty amazing. And, you know, we've I think we've done good. So <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of the work that we've done. So. On that note, um, the only other thing I want to point out is that I personally feel that it's a wonderful, we've been given a site that historically had a sense of really doing well in the community. Um, there's some cool stories I did by researching, if you have it in your handout, about how the Creamery and the Richmond Co-op historically actually had a backbone of what they did was actually supporting community initiatives and the well-being of the community. And I'm grateful that I get to be part of that history and actually pass on that legacy, both by cleaning up a brownfield for our community, but also giving back in terms of a net zero development and opportunities for people to live, work, and play in this awesome town, in this awesome state. So that's me. And then I am I have the extraordinary honor to turn this over to uh, uh, Phil, uh, Phil Scott, Governor Phil Scott, to kind of continue down our celebration. So thank you.